Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the explanations of OCD and we're going to be looking at um, particularly the biological explanation of OCD and then thinking about the strengths and weaknesses of looking at OCD from a biological point of view. So the biological explanation of OCD is um, split into two parts. There's a genetic explanation, so thinking about genes and um, inheritance from parents. And then also the neural explanation. So this is the abnormal functioning of the brain and the mechanisms within it. So the neurotransmitters and neurons. So first off, the genetic explanation. There are two genes that are involved in OCD or said to be linked to OCD. The first one is the COMP gene. The COMP gene is said to be linked with the production of the neurotransmitter dopamine and it's found that in people with OCD they have a higher level of dopamine. So more dopamine or excessive dopamine is being produced in the brain when it shouldn't be that high. And that's why um, people with OCD are more likely to have um, dopamine in their brain or more of it in their brain. Secondly is the CERT gene and the CERT gene or otherwise known as 5-HTT which you'll also know if you've done GCSE is, from, uh, is also linked with depression but it's the gene that produces or helps transport serotonin and it's found that people with OCD similar to those with depression have lower levels of serotonin in their brain and there's lots of evidence such as the one below to suggest that um, this gene is present in several family members, all of whom are showing OCD. So there's evidence to support this genetic explanation. Now, a link to this is obviously, if we're talking about serotonin and dopamine, then we're talking about neurotransmitters. So this genetic explanation is closely aligned with um, the neural explanation of OCD. So it's important to note, first off, that we know that dopamine levels are really high in people with OCD and serotonin levels are really low in people with OCD. So remembering that, we're thinking now about how that has an effect or how that is affected by your brain. So there are different parts of your brain or different subsections of your brain that are responsible for different things. And there are particular structures within the brain that are really important in, um, OC in the development of OCD. So they control certain behaviours which can explain some behaviours that are found in OCD. So the first thing is, is the orbital frontal cortex, the OFC. And this is the thing that tells you or signals that you are worrying about something. So we know in, for OCD, you might be worrying that your that one of your family members is going to die if you don't do a certain behaviour. So this area of the brain is really activated in people with OCD. And this sends a signal to the thalamus, which is the part of the brain which tells people to um, do certain activities. So, for example, in people with OCD, it helps them by telling them that they should turn a light switch off, on and off three times in order to make themselves feel better about the worry. So these two areas are really activated in people with OCD. And then finally, there's a small part of the basal ganglia, which is called the caudate nucleus. And what it normally does is keeps that OFC under control. So all your worries, you don't, you're not acting on them normally in a normally functioning person. However, in someone with OCD, they are really struggling um, to suppress these signals. So actually the, this part of the brain is not working effectively. And so they are showing, they're not able to switch off or ignore the impulses that have been sent from the OFC. And therefore this pro stop, doesn't stop patients from uh, doing their compulsive behaviors. So we've got the OFC, which is the kind of the cognitive thought processes that are going on, the thalamus, which is leading to the behavioural processes, and then that leads to a lack of activation in the caudate nucleus. So those are all your explanations. Remember that you don't have to think about them separately, although you might just be asked about one bit or another. So you might just be asked about the genetic explanation, or you might just be asked about the neural explanation. 
So evaluating it, the first thing is, is that if we're talking about genes, then we're always going to find that there are twin studies. So there's evidence to show that if one identical twin has um, OCD, then it, there's a 68% chance that the other twin will have OCD. And this is really, this is a really high link that, so it shows that there is a massive implication on the biological side of it. So nature is having a massive impact on whether or not you develop OCD, but it's not limited to that. And that's really important that actually there's still partly a environmental influence. A weakness of it, twin studies. We know that twin studies are not always effective because non-identical twins and identical twins are treated differently, so that's a problem. There's also evidence to support the role of neural mechanisms, so we know that if you take antidepressants that alters the levels of serotonin in your brain and that also reduces the levels of OCD symptoms, so it obviously does, there's obviously a link between serotonin and OCD. And then finally, it's worth noting, as we've kind of discussed previously, is that OCD is um, might also be triggered by trauma or stressful events. So there is also an environmental impact. So there is an environmental trigger. I hope that was helpful. Thank you for listening.